So the the first question is, uh, would you please explain Ioniso Manasikara? Is this reflection a type of mindfulness practice or is it merely right thinking? So Ioniso Manasikara, could you please explain it? Yeah, Ioniso Manasikara, I have explained several times. I don't mind explaining it again. Yoni means the origin, beginning. Manasikara is uh, reflecting Manasi, actually word, Pali word, Manasikara bring into the mind. That means reminding us. That means Yoniso means origin. Origin means root, root. There are six roots. Unwholesome side, there are three, greed, hatred, and delusion. Wholesome side, there are three, non-greed, non-hatred, non-delusion. So when certain mental state arises, we must immediately look at our mind and see whether that particular mental state is arisen from greed, hatred, or delusion. That means we know the root. Then we immediately try to change that into non-greed, non-hatred, non-delusion, so that we will not be carried away with the greed, hatred, and delusion. The reason why we don't want to get carried away with the greed, hatred, and delusion is because they always entail pain and suffering. Greed never brings, uh, brings us pleasure. Hatred never brings pleasure. Delusion never brings pleasure. They always cause pain and suffering. We don't want to maintain that. Therefore, we immediately let practice, let go of greed, let go of greed, and practice metta to let go of our hatred, and practice uh, insight, wisdom, in order to let go of our delusion. So we replace greed with non-greed, Hatred with non-hatred, that is loving friendliness or metta. Delusion we replace with mindfulness, insight, or wisdom. That way we can uh, see the, them as they are and develop our mind in, in wholesome mental states and uh, as we know, uh, we meditate for the purification of mind to overcome sorrow and lamentation, to overcome pain and grief, to fall, fall, up, fall ourselves in the right path and attaining liberation and attaining bhana. These are the fivefold purposes. When greed, even in the Mahasatipata Sutta, it is abhijya domana sang, overcoming excessive greed and distress, grief, in order to clean our mind. And therefore, Yonis or Manasigara uh, is a mindful reflection, and this is how we practice mindful reflection, going to the root and nip them in the bud. Okay. Thank you, Bante. The next question is, how does one exactly see the arising, changing, and passing of feelings to discern impermanence? Okay. Uh, to discern impermanence. Okay. It is you have to <clears throat> exactly pay attention to 
your own feeling as they arise and as they persist and as they pass away. Again, if you notice any perception arising, persisting, and passing away. For instance, when you perceive an object, that very instant you become aware of the fact that perception arises. And if you keep sustaining it after a while, it slowly fades away and then it disappears. That is how it, you become aware of passing away, the disappearing or weakening. And then afterwards, your attention goes to somewhere else and your perception will no longer be on the previous object. And that is what you notice when perception arises. Similarly, when thought arises, uh, we always have thought, and this thought, if you really pay attention to the thought, that thought afterward becomes very uh, troublesome, and then it begins to weaken and slowly fades away. This is how you see the thought arising, persisting and passing away. These are very subtle mental states. We simply can uh, describe the process, but it is up to you to put it into practice. Then uh, you will see for yourself how uh, exactly them arising, persisting or changing and passing away uh, of feeling, uh, perception, uh, thought. Consciousness is difficult, but even consciousness you can see arising and passing because the consciousness always uh, needs an object. In uh, Mahasatipatthana Sutta, in mindfulness of the mind, you see Saragan Chittan, Saragan Chittan Tivajanati, Vitaragan Chittan, like that. When you see the mind with greed, you become aware of the mind with greed. When the mind is without greed, you become aware of the mind without greed, and so forth. Then you pay attention to your mind, you will see consciousness always arises along with some mental contents, such as greed, hatred, and so on, jealousy, fear, anxiety, worry, and so forth. So many mental states. Only few of them are mentioned as examples, the rest we can see by ourselves as they arise and pass away. Okay, since there are more questions, perhaps uh, that I hope is enough uh, answer to your question. Uh, yesterday you spoke of the joys and griefs of worldly household life as opposed to the joys and griefs of the life of renunciation. In the past, you have used the, the Pali terms Samisa and Niramisa. Are they the same in sense? Okay. Pali word is Samisa and Niramisa. Samisa means uh, uh, is, is uh, uh, with uh, uh, what do you call carnal with carnal uh, intent that means related to sense experience senses uh, and uh, niramisa means not sense related to senses for instance when uh, uh, Sam is a sukha. 
I mentioned you have seen, heard, smell, tasted, touch, subject, the object like uh, form, sound, smell, taste, touch, mind object, and so forth. We have seen in the past. They were enticing, pleasing, uh, yeah, attractive. Out of that, those things, pleasure arises in the mind. That is called Swami Sukha. Swami Sukha, because they, you have seen them through your eyes, ears, nose, and so on. Niramisa means that the joy, pleasure arises not dependent or depending on any material objects. For example, you uh, have uh, uh, joy arising by letting go, or joy arises by seeing impermanence. I mentioned yesterday when you see impermanence of all the pleasant objects you had seen in the past, Joy arises in you because joy, the impermanence is the truth. You see the truth. Truth is not something material. Truth is Dhamma. Truth is some, uh, the, uh, not just mental state. For instance, impermanence is true. Nobody can deny that. But you cannot pinpoint and put your finger on impermanence in one place because everything is impermanent. And uh, that doesn't come through the senses, but it arises in, in the object. And when we see the object, you can see the object is impermanent. For instance, you hear a sound like my sound right now. You listen to it and it it doesn't persist, it doesn't stay for long. As soon as I stop talking, as soon as my voice stops, the voice is gone that, because it is impermanent. So you can see the Dhamma in this voice. And then when you see this of all the sound, the smell, taste, touch, and mind object of the past and see them all are marked with this characteristic called impermanence. Then you see, then arises in your mind a joy because you see the truth which doesn't have a duplicate. Truth doesn't have a duplicate. Truth is truth is only one. And when you see this uh, non-duplicity, -dupli non and uh, impermanent nature, you enjoy, you have joy. Similarly, something happening now through your eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind also are impermanent. So in the past, what you experienced was impermanent. Now your experience is impermanent. Seeing this uh, universal characteristic exactly as it is, you have joy. And Samis uh, Dukkha is for not getting certain things. In the past, you had pain and grief. Not getting what you want now, you have pain and grief now. And that is called Niramis Dukkha. Uh, Niramis Dukkha. You, you don't get what you want. But uh, Samisa Dukkha, Samisa Dukkha. Niramisa Dukkha means that you practice your meditation, you practice your morality, as at least you observe the five precepts, and you follow meditation, you have a schedule. Every day you practice very consistently. Uh, morning, noon, evening, and so forth. You meditate, and you follow mindfulness, concentration. You f follow it, and follow, and follow, and follow. 
but you have not attained anything. You are still in the same place you feel. But you heard so and so practice meditation attain stream entry. You are in the same place. You feel that you are in a plateau. That time you feel sad. That is called Niram is a Dukkha. Niram is a Dukkha. Niram is a Upekha is that you work hard to gain something because of your certain shortcomings of your planning and uh, the time you depend, invest your uh, time, money and so forth were not right, uh, wrong place, wrong company and so forth and so on, you lose. And then you think, well, I cannot do anything. I did my best. I went uh, to up to my limit, but I could not get it. So you have a certain degree of uh, uh, upeka, uh, equanimity. In the past, it, it happened. Now it is happening. So you have equanimous feeling. That is called sam is a neither pleasant nor unpleasant feeling. That means sam is a upeka. So I miss equanimity. And the other is Niramisa Upekka. Niramisa Upekka means non uh, carnal equanimity. Meaning, again, you see everything in the past was impermanent, everything now is impermanent. So there is no moment of excitement. They are all the same. Then you have equanimity. This is how these three states arise. I explained them in detail yesterday, and I think uh, uh, this may uh, be enough as uh, answering your question. Next question. Next what question is, that? is, could you please explain the luminous mind? In Pali, it's called Papasara Chitta. Does a newborn baby have this luminous mind? So okay. what is the luminous mind? Luminous mind is a mind that is uh, uh, unpolluted. Unpolluted, but baby's mind is, we cannot say unpolluted, because baby has a desire. Baby is uh, is the whole uh, uh, sort of embodiment of greed. Uh, you know, baby may not do so many other wrong things, but greed is there. Because baby always is uh, demanding attention, mother's attention, milk, uh, sleep, comfort. All these things baby demands, and therefore the mind is not totally luminous. Luminous mind is the mind that does not uh, have uh, greed settled in it, hatred in it, delusion in it, but it has it is uh, it has the potential of uh, polluting. If it, if it doesn't have the potential of polluting, it can never be polluted. So possibility is there. It is not an arahant, enlightened person's mind. Ordinary person mind is, uh, for instance, uh, your mind always is not full of greed. Not always. And sometimes uh, when you your senses exposed to the sensory stimuli, then greed can arise, hate can arise, jealousy can arise. But as long as they are not exposed to anything, uh, you, your mind is luminous. But ordinary person does not know that. Therefore, ordinary person does not practice meditation. When the person meditates, the person can uh, prevent the mind from getting polluted, corrupt, and and also the person who 
knows uh, to maintain this uh, a luminous state and uh, <coughs> eliminating the potential uh, totally, completely, and through the practice of inside meditation, then if the person knows it, it practi he practices, and then uh, luminous mind uh, potential of becoming polluted also will disappear. Even the possibility, potential of becoming polluted will be eliminated. Then only can the person become enlightened. Otherwise, luminous mind doesn't mean enlightened mind. Luminous mind it has potential, but it is not polluted uh, through our unmindfulness, uh, through the uh, through our senses. You see, it is, uh, uh, for instance, when you open your eyes uh, to see an object, that moment you see an object, then immediately greed, hatred, jealousy, and, uh, jealousy and so forth can arise. Before that arises, as soon as you open your eyes, see the object, that moment is luminous, but immediately it can be polluted because of an unmindful state. So the enlightened person has, uh, has, uh, has developed the mind when the person opens eyes, see the object, and then become aware of the fact that, that the person simply saw object. And this is exactly what you can remember, this uh, very famous uh, uh, story of Bahya Daruchirya. Bahya Daruchirya. Bahya Daruchirya, Buddha said, uh, Bahya, be, when you see, become aware of the fact that seeing, seeing, Hearing, become aware of the fact that you are hearing, smelling, tasting, and so on, without uh, trying to develop your desire and de without developing, I see, I hear, I smell, without using subject, I being see, seeing become aware of seeing that is how the person maintain luminous mind so Buddha asked Bahya to maintain luminous mind so Buddha said when you, uh, he said to Bahya when you do this you will not be here not there not in between that means you are you don't invest your eye here you don't invest your eye there in the middle. You don't invest your eye at the end. Neither here, nor there, nor in between, said the Buddha. And therefore, uh, you can see luminous mind is the state which is, uh, which has a potential of polluting, but you develop your mindfulness concentration to prevent those possibilities of pollution and then the mind can become totally pure and attain liberation. Okay. Thank you, Bhante. I don't see a, a question in the chat, but I wanted to ask, um, I'd like to come back to the first topic that we discussed, uh, Yoniso Maniskara. So you explain one has to be mindful in order to see greed, hatred, and delusion in us. But in order to remove delusion, we apply mindfulness. So how do you um, see uh, delusion in yourself when you're already mindful? Okay. If you are uh, mindful, then... A delusion uh, will no longer be there. 
Right. As soon as you uh, drift away from uh, mindfulness, delusion can uh, can take place. Because if you have completely eliminated delusion, you will never have it. Since you have not completely eliminated delusion, the moment you are unmindful, delusion can arise in mind. Delusion is actually is called avijja. Avijja means not knowing, not knowing what, not knowing the Four Noble Truths. Not knowing the Four Noble Truths is called avijja. Dukkha anyana, dukkha samadhi anyana, dukkha nirodhi anyana, dukkha nirodhi gamini patipada anyana. Said the Buddha uh, when he described delusion or avijja. Avijja is a very technical term for delusion. Sometimes it's a, a, a delusion, sometimes called avijja. Lobha, dosa, moha. In that place, instead of avijja, the word moha is used. Moha means delusion. Of course, delusion uh, in uh, psychology uh, has some uh, different uh, connotation. Uh, it has, uh, uh, it is sometimes uh, uh, they, they think of uh, helping them, curing them through the medicine, uh, advices, and so forth. But this delusion that the Buddha, the delusion that the Buddha talk about, is not that kind of delusion. That means all living beings can have delusion, uh, so long as they do not know the four noble truths. When one knows four noble truths, that person does not have delusion. So when we are mindful, when we are mindful, it is the remedy for overcoming delusion. As in the first place, one must understand one uh, does not have mindfulness. The fact that one does not have mindfulness is the opening for delusion to arise. Uh, so when we are mindful, then the opening for arising delusion will be closed. Uh, I mean, that's how it happens. And therefore, when we are when we are mindful, we see when we are mindful, especially we see everything is impermanent. I. I repeat this word impermanent thousands of times. I never get tired of it, even though people are tired of it, of listening to it. I will never give up. I will never be tired of talking about impermanent because that is the truth and that is what the Buddha said. I also mentioned many, many times whether the Buddhas come into existence or not, this established Dhamma, this root of Dhamma, this law of Dhamma exists. That is, all conditioned things are impermanent. All conditioned things are impermanent. And also, whether the Buddhas come into existence or not, dependent origination arises. Dependent orig origination is there. Things arise not uh, uh, fortuitously, uh, accidentally, they arise depending on something. This is uh, the truth. And similarly, impermanence is there whether the Buddhas come into existence or not. So when we are mindful, when we are mindful, we see impermanence very, very clearly. Whatever is impermanent is unsatisfactory. Whatever impermanent, unsatisfactory is without self. 
when one sees these three things, then one knows this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. These are the three states that we use to overcome what you call tanha, mana, ditti, craving, conceit, and wrong view. In order to overcome craving, we say, this is not mine. This is not mine. What is not mine? The body is not mine. Feeling is not mine. Perception is not mine. Eyes are not mine. Nose are not mine. They all arise dependent on various factors. And when they are, they are not there, they don't arise. And therefore, when they are mindful, we them all impermanent, therefore they are not mine. And they are none of them can be called I am. This is not I, this is not I. Although we use the word I for the conventional purpose in order to communicate, but you don't find I anywhere. And then, this is not myself. Of course, when there is no I, how can something become myself? So, this attacks craving, conceit, and wrong view. Tanna, craving, conceit, mana, wrong view, ditti. Tanna, mana, ditti. Neta mama, neso hamasmi, nameso vata. This is not mine, this is not I am, this is not myself. And when we are mindful, we see this whole uh, process exactly as it is. Okay? Thank you, Bhante. Uh, uh, there's okay. no more questions. You see, you see somebody has mentioned a Sutta Sanyutta Nikaya, uh, 30, section 35, Number 80, Avijja Sutta. Uh, very good. Uh, it is uh, Judy. Uh, Judy, thank you very much for mentioning this. That is true. Avijja Sutta. We uh, like you to hear, read it. Bahya Sutta, about Bahya. You can see it in. Uh, uh, Udana, Udana, uh, you see, the person has again Judy. Judy, thank you very much for bringing these two references for people to read them. Okay, I think this is enough for this morning's uh, this answers. Thank you. Uh, and very good that you are, you ask very good questions, and uh, so we do. We have some about twenty five minutes to meditate. So let us meditate now. Okay. Okay. May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, May all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere, neither from anger nor ill will. 
should anyone wish harm to another? As a mother who risks her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate all the world, a heart of boundless loving friendliness, above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hatred or resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down, or when awake, one should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely dwelling here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision. Removing desire for sensual pleasures, one comes never again to birth in the womb. With this method thought, let us meditate for the next 25 minutes.
By means of these meritorious deeds, may I never join with the foolish. May I join always with the wise until the time I attain Nibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering. May the fear struck be free from fear. May the grieving be free from grief. So too may all beings be. From the highest realm of existence to the lowest, may all beings arisen in these realms, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. With this, we end this session, friends. And I want to share my metta as usual with all those who are in hospitals, suffering from various diseases and taken care of by doctors, nurses, and hospital staff. May they recover very soon, return to normal life, practice dumb meditation, and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering. May the doctors, nurses, hospital staff who are taking care of these people, risking their own life, sacrificing their comfort, may they also find time to practice Dhamma, meditation, and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering. May all those who have lost their loved ones in various places and may they be free from their grief and find the nature of Dhamma and practice meditation and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering. May all those who are in the northern direction, northeastern direction, eastern direction, southeastern direction, southern direction, southwestern direction, western direction, northwestern direction, and up and down below. May they all be well, happy, and peaceful wherever they are, without any exception, be well, happy, and peaceful. That's all we can do today, uh, because time is going against us now, and I hope to see you again next week. Okay? Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you for all your suggestions, questions, and so forth.